All right, we're back with another painting tutorial, and this week we're going to be painting the Craven Throne Guard, uh, the champion of that squad. Uh, it's going to be a pretty simple paint scheme, um, sort of similar to a paint scheme that I believe Richard Gray pioneered several, several years ago, uh, using red as the main color. But we're going to use some dark blue and some light blue and a couple other things and mix it up just a little bit. Uh, this is my personal army scheme. So, of course, more units means I paint in the same scheme. Um, I'll go ahead and get started immediately here. We're going to start with the under layer of blue, and that's going to be Aethermatic Blue. And we're just going to do this on the arms and on the face for now. We're going to come back to that for this color for some blending later. But for right this second, all we're going to do it is on the face and the arms. So I'll put that in here, like this. If it gets on the chain mail or anything like that, it's not a big deal. We'll be painting that in with metal later. Not a problem. <clears throat> I have been sick the last couple days, so if my voice sounds a little scratchy, I do, <clears throat> I do apologize. Still wanted to get this video out. Recovery and all. Doing much better now, though. And thankfully, I was negative for all of the scary things uh, just had a bit of a upper respiratory infection and the doctor gave me some some good meds and cleared it up pretty quickly all right so super simple first step there just the arms and the face like I said we'll come back to this color later but for now that's it so I'll let this dry and we'll come back and do the next step All right, our Aethermatic Blue is nice and dry, and now we're going to move on to Leviathan Blue. If the camera will decide to focus on it, there we go. And this is going to be for the robes on the bottom here. And again, if it hits the chainmail, no big deal. We'll be painting that in with metallic, so we'll cover right over any contrast paint. Um, and for this, we're going to go down just kind of best judgment just kind of down like this um, we don't we're not gonna go all the way to the base I'm just gonna cut it off at a certain point I am gonna go all the way to the bottom of these tendrils but um anything that's reaching up like down here I'm not gonna put any of this blue on maybe just like that that'll do and we're gonna come back and blend that in in a bit with some athematic blue just making sure to get all the robes under here though, maybe come down to about there, that's fine. Um, when you're working around the leather here and stuff, we do want to be careful because the leather and the wood, we will be painting with contrast paint. Um, so we want to be careful not to hit any of that, and obviously the over robes we don't want to hit that either because we'll definitely be using contrast paint on that. So just being careful, going slow, no need to rush, no need to make any unnecessary mistakes. Just come around here, make sure to get all of it, and then make sure to get the insides of all these robes also. These guys are hollow up to a point, so we want to make sure that from every angle in here, we get them nice and covered with paint. There we go. I think I actually got the back of some of the leather in there, but that's all right. Not a big deal. The inside of the ghost, probably no one's going to see anyway. All right. So there's our blue. Um, and now we're going to go back to our Aethermatic blue. And our Leviathan blue here has started drying. And so we will probably need a little bit more of it to help blend, but that's okay. I'm just going to take this Aethermatic Blue here and get it all over the bottom here, like this. And so as you can see right there, there is a very stark line there um, because our blue dried. That's okay. We'll just come grab a little bit more of our Leviathan Blue and just work it up in here like that 
and then rinse the brush off. Get some more of our Aethermatic Blue. And just come down like this. And come down like this. And there we go. Now we've got a nice, a nice blend going from our dark blue to our light blue. Just, just what we want. So I will let this completely dry just so I can get those blends locked in. Um, I will fiddle with them if they start to, if the like the pigment starts to shift around. I'll just fiddle them with them with a brush a little bit, like pull this back up maybe, and then maybe add a little bit more ethermatic down here just so we get that nice teal punch. Maybe pull some of the color out of here, add some more ethermatic down here, stuff like that. Basically, just to however your own personal persuasion is. Um, I'll just do this as it dries, and then once it's probably about 50% dry, I'll hit it with a hair dryer to finish it up, and then we'll come back and do the next step. Alright, we're back, and as you can see, our blend is all nice and dry down there. And now we're going to move on to the other set of robes, and for that we're going to use Blood Angels Red. Let's give this a good shake. And then for this, that's uh this very smooth surface here. We just want to make sure to use long strokes and to use maybe more paint than you're necessarily used to when applying a layer paint. Really want that brush loaded up and we want to make long strokes. Some places we will have to make short ones obviously like under here and stuff. But whenever possible, we want to do long strokes. That helps smooth out the surface of the contrast paint and uh, gives you a nice smooth finish. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure why the long strokes helps. Um, I'm not that much of an expert on paint. I just know that over the couple thousand miniatures I've painted now with contrast paint, long strokes helps. <laughs> if someone knows the reason, then... Uh, by all means, stick it down in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll be sure to pin it. Might be something to do, just do with uh, like surface tension and having the least impact on the surface tension. I have no idea. And even if you don't know, if you're uh, if you give an answer that sounds smart, I might still pin it because again, I have no idea. So just making sure to get all of that in there. I think we've got it all. Just grab that in there. Good. Nope, oh, nope. Right in here, the back of the sleeve here. There we go. Alright. So now, I will let that dry. Make sure it's not clumping up in any one spot. And then we will come back and start in on the wood and the leather. Alright, we're back, and I said we were going to do the wood and the leather, but I forgot we're going to do the dry brush now. So, I'm going to take some Ulthwin Grey, and this is the air version, uh, does not matter though. Ulthwin Grey, air or regular, we're just dry brushing, so all we need is something with pigment, and this does have it. Uh, then we're going to use a makeup brush. Uh, this brand is wet and wild. Uh, the brand does not matter. This was the cheap brand at Walmart, so that's what I got. Um, and as you can see, it's got the big fluffy bristles. That's what we want. So we're going to get some of this on our brush. Just going to get it, work it in there on our brush. And then we're just going to work it into the bristles. Might have to give this another shake because it is the air paint, so it's kind of thin. We just want the... We just want it worked into all the bristles here, so we're just going to do this. Get it all nice and worked in. We don't want too much on the brush, obviously. We are dry brushing, after all. And then we're just going to take the miniature, and we're just going to go across it. Like this. Oh, the camera's kind of freaking out, but that's okay. So we're just going to come down here. And go across all the surfaces. You can do this as light or as heavy as you want, really. It's up to you. A little too much paint on the brush there. It's okay. Um, I do it heavier on some of them, lighter on others. 
Uh, if you decide it's too heavy, you can always just paint it back over with the contrast paint. It'll cover over just fine. And then do the dry brushing again. Um, this might be a little too heavy on like the red. I might go back and redo that. We'll see. Um, but that's the process basically. Um, you just get, the, get most of the paint off your brush and then go to town on it. We get a nice ghostly effect on this guy. So I'll let that dry. I might go do, redo the red. That might see, that looks a little too heavy to me. So I think I will go redo the red. Um, once I do that, I'll come back and then we will get on to the wood and the leather for real. All right, and we're back and I redid the red, give it a lighter dry brush. Just had too much brush or too much paint on the brush that first time. That looks much better, more what I'm trying to achieve. I left it down on the blue though, because I actually quite like it heavier down on the blue there. So now we're gonna move on to Wildwood and that's going to be for the wood of this guy which is just the stock of the crossbow and the quiver here on the inside. Um, I'm also going to paint the base in this color to prepare for the basing, which will come later. So all the, uh, all the metal bits on the crossbow are going to be painted in, well, metal. So we don't have to worry about that. The only things we want to avoid here are the, stu the two areas of string or rope, which are the... Uh, I'm not sure, I guess the string. Yes, that's the word that you use for bows. Bow string. A crossbow string, whatever. That, and then there's rope around here uh, that we also want to avoid. We'll do that in a rope color later. Also, obviously avoiding anything we've already painted. As much as possible, I mean, this is for an army. As always, these are battle-ready paint jobs, quick and easy. Nothing spectacular. Not going to go and win Golden Demon with any of these. But that is not our purpose. Our purpose is just to get an army on the table. And while well, there's no 10 point penalty in Age of Sigmar for not being fully painted, it's still always fun to go to a tournament and have a fully painted army. So I'm just going to get the crossbow in here or the quiver, rather, of the crossbow, making sure to avoid the leather straps here. The ends are going to be metal. Just going to move this dot off the leather here. There we go. And get in there. And in there. And then if we can see anything on the back, which we cannot, it's all buried in there. So then, like I said, just going to paint the base. It has a little bit of texture down here near the... Uh, ghostly bits and then the rest of the base as well um, and this is just to give us a nice under layer of color for when we do the base later um, also I forgot to mention earlier in the video this miniature was primed first with Abaddon black spray and then an overspray or a Cenethal spray uh, quite heavily with Wraithbone from Citadel both from Citadel so, I'll let this dry completely, and then we'll come back and do the leather and the bowstring. Alright, we're back in our wildwood is at least dry up here. It's still drying down there, but that's fine. We're not going to touch that anymore. So, we're going to move on to snake bite leather now. And that's going to be for, you guessed it, all the leather on this guy. So, most of this is uh, just on the chain mail, so we just have to be careful of the red up here but otherwise we can paint right over the chain mail no problem we'll come back and hit that later um, I'm just now noticing that I forgot to paint the uh, the bolts here that was supposed to be wildwood I'll come back and do that on one of the brakes for now we'll just do the leather here and you don't have to be too careful about this because this uh, lighter color will just sit on top of the wildwood that we did earlier and not uh, not bother it. It's always nice that way to use lighter colors later in contrast painting because they can usually be painted right on top of a darker color and not affect anything that's going on. Um, if I ever get my final thoughts together about speed paint, I will make a video. I feel like this subject has been done to death but 
if anyone is interested in my opinion specifically, I might have a video out about that eventually. Um, for me, the reactivation is a big deal. It's probably going to mean I don't use the speed paint a ton. Um, I know there are some people who say there's advantages to the speed paint reactivating. My personal opinion is anything that you can think of that's an advantage for speed paint reactivating, I can do on purpose with a different paint, like contrast paint. And so why would I want something to happen on accident when I can just do it on purpose when I need it? But that's for a different video. For now, that's all our leather painted in. So I'll move swiftly on to the bowstring or the crossbow string. Skeleton hoard for that. And like I said, we've got some up here by the business end. And then of course the string itself. I'm hesitant to call this a string just because it looks like, you know, heavy, heavily braided rope. But uh, I suppose the forces involved in a crossbow would require such a thing, not just string. And of course I suppose the bow string is not really just string either. Whatever. All right, so that's all done. We'll let that dry. I'll paint in the uh, the bolts there with the wildwood, and then we'll come back and do some metallics, and then just be about done with him. All right, we're back, and we're going to start on our metallics now. And I'm going to start with the chainmail, and for that, I'm going to use decayed metal from Scale 75. Uh, if you don't have the Scale 75 paint. Uh, Castellax, Castellax Bronze from Citadel will work just fine. They're very similar colors and they'll work just great. Uh, beyond that, my next choice would be Sycorax Bronze, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Games Workshop. And then finally, a fallback would be uh, Warplock Bronze or Hashet Copper. So those four paints in that order would be how I would... Uh, I would paint this in Citadel. I just happened to be liking some of the Scale 75 paints recently, so I figured I'd keep using them. Nothing wrong with that. But I always like to give the Citadel equivalents since that's what I mostly paint with. And in my experience, that's what many miniature painters paint with. Um, at least around my area. We're all pretty much in Games Workshop fanboys at this point, so that's what we like to use. But there are always conversion charts out there if you're an Army Painter fan. I don't know the Army Painter w range well enough to give a recommendation, but I'm sure if you put in Decayed Metal from Scale 75 or any of the four colors I just named from Citadel, uh, those being Castellax Bronze, Sycorax Bronze, Warplock Bronze, and Hashet Copper. I'm sure one of those has an equivalent. I'm sure they probably all have an equivalent in uh, Scale 3 or in Army Painter. But at least one for sure. And you can get what you need. So like I said, just doing the chainmail in this color. Working our way around. Um, everything else, all the plate mail and all of the weapon bits are going to be in silver, which we'll get to in a second, um, although I just said that and I'm actually going to do the cross guard here in this color. He is the champion. Uh, the other, other guys in the squad have silver cross guards, but he's the champion so he can be a little fancier with his two-tone sword. So I will let that dry and then we'll come back and do the silver. All right, so now we will continue on with the silver. And for that, I'm going to use black metal from Scale 75 again. Uh, the Citadel equivalent for this would be Iron Warriors, probably. It's a good, uh, good substitute. Then, probably after that, I think I'd probably do Grey Knight Steel. It's a little bluer, but uh, I think it would go well with this paint scheme. Especially, we're going to put um, some Agrax Earthshade over the top of this silver just to kind of decrepify it a little bit. Um, and so I think uh, I think Grey Knight Steel would actually be a great choice for this. 
if you're looking for a Citadel equivalent. Um, and like I said earlier, this is just going to be for every other bit of metal on this guy. So that's all these crossbow bits here. Uh, it will be his helmet. All the bits on his quiver and on his sword that we haven't already painted. Just being careful not to touch any of the parts we've already painted. Uh, painting over metallic can be a pain sometimes with uh, contrast paint. If you're not wanting to show the metallic, that is. If you're wanting a uh, colored metallic using a contrast paint, they're great, but uh, not always what you're looking for. And when that is, when they're not what you're looking for, it can be difficult. And if you're feeling like you can't get right up to the edges, because you don't want to nick the, uh, the contrast paint, that is where our wash we're going to put on later can help you cover up spots like that. So if you're nervous about hitting your contrast paint, just don't paint right up to the edge. Leave a little gap between the contrast and your armor color or your metal color and then fix it up later with your wash. And I'll do that, actually, so I can show you how that works. I'm trying to find a spot where it hasn't already happened. Like, I can't do it here, because as you can see, there's already some silver going on to our metal parts. But um, let me see if I can find a spot where it would work. Probably on the helmet, I can. And show you that. Just make sure you get these little spots in here where the leather is worn out. Alright, just in here. Actually here, I'll leave it in here and we can see it. So as you can see in here, there's still primer showing. I didn't get metal on there. I don't want to try to get my brush in there because I might hit a bunch of the contrast paint. So we'll just leave that in there and let our wash take care of it when we do that. You'll see how that works. And I'll do it a little bit here also. See, I'm leaving. I don't want to go right up to the contrast paint because I'm just worried about brush control or whatever. I'm just leaving a little line of primer in there that normally you wouldn't want to leave because, you know, it's primer. But uh, when we put our wash on, We'll cover that right up. And of course, if you're comfortable painting right up to the line like this, you absolutely can. But a tip for either beginners or if you have maybe you have a little bit of hand shake, which I do sometimes, this can really help uh, kind of help mitigate that. So, I'm going to let this dry completely. I'm actually going to blast it with a hairdryer, get it dry as fast as possible. And then we will come back and do the Agrax Earthshade. And we'll call him just about done. Alrighty, we're back and our metal's all nice and dry. And I forgot, uh, before I cut the video, that I needed to paint the belt buckles here and the little loops there and the end of that. So I did that. Now we're going to move on to Agrax Earthshade. And we're just going to shade the metal with this. Uh, and the leather, because why not? Um, so I'll start with this part that I've been talking about up here, where I didn't go right up to the edge. I just wanted to leave some of the primer there so that I didn't have to worry about accidentally getting silver on the red. And as you can see, that Agrax sits right in there, covers it right up, no problem at all. So like I said, if you have maybe a little bit of shaky hands, or you're just still learning brush control, because maybe you're a new painter, or maybe you just aren't as used to painting super fine details. Um, maybe you've been painting a ton of Space Marines like I have, and you know they don't have they have some small details, but not a ridiculous amount. So that can be a, a tool in the arsenal to help out until if it's something that you will eventually learn, then uh, until you get better at it. But if you've got a handshake, then um, that can really help. I seem to. I don't have a permanent handshake. Um, I know a couple of people who do. Um, 
but mine seems to be if I drink too much caffeine or something like that, then my hands will get a little jittery. Um, so it's a t technique I use if I really want to keep painting. And that is going on. So I've got, got this all over the metallic and the brown. Then I'm just going to come into my finger and just wipe it away a little bit on the big flat spots. We want sort of this paint to be like in the recesses, but not necessarily turning our metal brown. If that makes sense. So we'll just come in like that. And that just gives a little bit of the shine of the silver back. So that will about do it for him. Um, I am going to do the base, but I'm actually going to do a, the base in another video, which at the time of this going live, if you're watching this video right now, the other video is live too. Maybe you even watched that video first and now you're here. Crazy. You did it backwards. But if you're watching this video first and you want to know how you, the bases that you should be seeing right now, should be seeing him and the rest of his squad all painted up with their bases. If you want to see how that base works, go check out the other video. But thank you very much for watching. If you like this sort of thing, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment below, all of the above or none of the above. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time.